The following content is provided under a Creative Commons license. Your support will help MIT OpenCourseWare continue to offer high-quality educational resources for free. To make a donation or view additional materials from hundreds of MIT courses, visit MIT OpenCourseWare at ocw.mit.edu. What we've managed through badgering the utilities relentlessly is to get them to agree to measure part or all of the high volume gas leaks that they're going to fix this next year. But we need a method to do that. So today's uh, one part of today's hackathon, and you can sit, choose which, me which uh, group you want to go with. The part that I'm going to be working on is coming up with that method to quickly, easily, using utility common uh, tools, measure the emissions off of high volume gas leaks. Uh, and if we can do this, it's possible the state will enact you know, the regulations that this must be done with every high volume gas leak from now on. So this is an incredible chance to create a uh, you know, statewide program to allow for feedback and transparency in the system to allow them to do their job much better in terms of uh, reducing emissions from natural gas leaks. Does that somewhat make sense? Mm -hmm. um, and we'll be, uh, we got some of the cool tools that the utilities use and uh, lots of information about how to do that. So who knows what a gas leak smells like? That's the most kind of um, you know, direct sensor we have is our noses. Who, who, who doesn't really have a good idea of what a gas leak smells like? Okay, great. Well, I have these scratch and sniff cards, um, so you can find out. And so you open these things up. Does anyone want to remind themselves of what a gas leak smells like? Well, these, this can be a little, um, you know, kind of uh, you know, remind yourself. Sure. Okay, so take one of them around. You just open it up, and there's a little uh, teardrop uh, shape. Um, and you scratch it, and you smell it. Yeah. Okay, so you smell that? Okay, so um, when I got into this, I didn't even know what a gas leak smelled like. Like six years ago, I had no idea. And then I, once I smelled it, it's like you'll. Ne it's like riding a bike. Now, you'll if you haven't smelled it, you will. You, you're gonna. You're gonna have that. Um, What's the experience? That's in the smell? Yeah, it's called. It's a family of compounds called mercaptans. They're all sulfur-based um, compounds. Um, and, and our noses are just very, very uh, sensitive to them. They're put in, they're injected into the gas because methane itself is odorless. And it was actually uh, mandated by federal law to be put in there after a huge explosion happened in New London, Texas that killed hundreds of kids in a school. Um, and no one smelled it. So this odorant is added at the parts per billion range. It's like maybe five to 10 parts per billion of this odorant mercaptan. Um, so we use a number of techniques um, to measure these gas leaks. As a citizen and as community science, your nose is, is really a very powerful uh, sensor. Um, the, the industry, what they do is they use, they use uh, some sniffers. They've been around for decades. Um, one of the things they do uh, is use this thing called a combustible gas indicator. Um, and I'll just turn it on. You can hear the, the noise. That's a pump. And so it's pulling in air through this little uh, um, hole here. Um, often there's an uh, extension on this so that it can go deeper down, like a meter down into the uh, ground. So, Good thing, right now we're measuring zero, zero percent gas, okay? This thing's pulling in about a half a liter per minute. That's the pump, um, so it's the zero there. Um, and when we go out on our drive around on uh, the 31st, those of you who can make it, if we come upon a gas leak in our, our very high precision, very sensitive sniffer, this one's a little bit more coarse, but we can get out and poke around and find out and pinpoint where is it under the surface that that gas is coming out, okay? Um, so maybe I'll just, uh, well, uh, I, I guess I'll turn this I might almost do a control experiment for semi-control where you can match people against that. So send people, you want to look, you know? Yeah, you, you know, that, that's, that's a good idea, but I will tell you the lower limit on this thing is about 500 parts per million methane. That's, 
That's the lower detection limit on this, which is very high. Does anyone know what the, the kind of background methane value is in our atmosphere in, in units of parts per million? Any guess, wild guesses? Two per billion. Yeah, uh, per million, about a little under two parts per million. 40,000 parts per million is when it gets explosive. 40,000 parts per million, okay? Um, That's you know. 80 times though. Yes, yes. So there's different ranges at which this problem is, has different um, you know, impacts. Uh, our global value of two parts per million now okay. is about something like 50% greater than it was in the pre-industrial uh, uh, condition and so the greenhouse gas Im impacts of even two parts per million is is very big. Instrumentation in our van, GPS enabled sniffer, um, detected a series of leaks along about a one eighth of a mile portion of that that street. Okay, so we've got this graph and I will show you later with these peaks that come out. They we plot right on Google Earth. Okay. Um, it's probable that those leaks are not coming from the new pipe, the new West Roxbury lateral, but they're probably coming from the adjacent pipes that are old and leaking that have already been there. The, 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 um, the real lost opportunity there, in addition to the fact that we don't need uh, the new pipeline, is that they paved brand new um, paving and brand new sidewalks. They didn't fix the old leaking pipelines when they put in this brand new pipeline. And Eversource, whose territory that is, by the way, is a co-investor in the uh, West Roxbury Lateral Pipeline. So apparently they just didn't care about, you know, maintaining their own infrastructure. Why um, wasn't that Why would it be on it? So anyway, that's what happened. Um, and so we took a picture of this. We have the data set. And um, what you'll see is, is like peaks and valleys, um, there may be like 15 or 20 of them. But are there 15 or 20 leaks? We, we don't know. Um, and that's what, if, if you want to go over to the section that we're working at, um, you will be able to um, think about is like, what is a leak? How many leaks are there when you get this series of spikes? Um, if, if the spikes go like that, tip down and come back up again and go down, is that one leak or two leaks? And the fact of the matter is, we don't yet have a very uh, kind of, um, you know, uh, universal definition of what a leak is. So you will help uh, do a leak count and you'll help determine uh, hopefully, what an objective uh, leak analysis can be by looking at these Google Earth uh, images of gas leaks. And they're gorgeous images, and it's just super fun. You feel like you're the only one who knows this information. It's great. Do you know the material of which the old pipes are made? Yeah, so the leak prone pipe, uh, most of it is cast iron, oh. and, and it goes back. Some pipes are over 100 years old, I think Audrey might have mentioned. There's also wrought iron. There's not much of that, but that's very old leak prone pipe as well. Um, bare steel um, is another um, leak prone pipe. Um, they're, they're all being replaced, well, at, at, when they're replaced, they're replaced with plastic pipe. Um, and, you know, that is not as leaky. Uh, it's, it's because it's newer. So this may be an independent and the wrong question at the wrong time, but about three or four years ago, there was a big issue here with Google uh, Maps. And then Google helped fit every single car and track and publish uh, their gas leaks all over the place. And really humorously, Wellesley was one of the biggest centers of the universe of gas leaks that they found. But they, as they did all the Google Drive Talks, they tracked that. They you know, where that fit into this conversation is you're going, what technology they were using, but they, you know, published this and it was actually fascinating. Yeah, so, so we published our Boston data in 2013, um, and that was all of the gas for over 3,000 weeks in Boston. Um, very soon after that, 
Google partnered with the Environmental Defense Fund to basically take this nationwide. Um, and so part of the doing that was coming back to the greater Boston area and they did their own map. Um, they got one leak per mile in Boston, we got four leaks per mile in Boston. So we're, that's part that's of the figuring this out. Yeah. So, so almost everything that's under the streets and sidewalks in Boston, Somerville, Cambridge, Newton, Brookline, is a, just about a half a pound per square inch of, of pressure in the, you know, under streets and sidewalks. Um, but it's like a tree, you have these trunk lines, and you have the big branches, uh, and then you have the little twigs. Um, so you have these intermediate branches like running down Route 9 that is, uh, it's either 22 or it's 40 PSI and it's leaking. Um, so, uh, so today you'll, you'll either decide to work on um, visualizing the data, looking at the data, uh, or working on measuring, you know, figuring out how to measure the uh, high volume gas leaks. So you'll sort of self-select into whatever group you want to do. Is there a question back here? I was just, just a basically, you know how, how these lines are varied? Yeah, it's, it's variable. About three feet is generally how deep they are. They have to be, uh, they, they put them deep enough that they, it will uh, reduce the frequency with which they freeze. Um, but in frost conditions, deep freezes, you can get mechanical disturbance due, due to, you know, frost and you can have broken mains and things like that. But, but anything's possible. Uh, you know, one thing I've learned is that, I mean, for the most part, gas lines run, you know, kind of uh, along the same um, axis as a street, but, you know, they'll run diagonal, and they'll be on both sides of the street, and they'll run under sidewalks, and they'll go this way and that, and it's, it can, there's, I, I've just seen most, any configuration, there's a legacy effect of this, um, it can be like a spaghetti down there. Are there maps of the existing pipelines? No. Uh, yes and no. There are um, there are public documents that show the operating pressure, for example, the National Grid's um, uh, service area, and I I can share that graph. Um, but there's not the detailed information on those maps that tell you the diameter, the age, and the material of all of the pipes. There are selected parts that we know of, um, but there's not, I mean, the utilities have, obviously, these maps, um, but they're not public. Uh -huh. only, only some have been made public, and it's very kind of selected. So you can uh, look at how to visualize the data and get to uh, do, uh, you know, figure out how many leaks there are in Chelsea, how exciting, and actually see where the leaks are. Um, or uh, measure the, uh, you know, figure out how to measure the emissions.